Okay, dividing exponents too. So what I'm going to do is pretty much what I did in the last video about dividing exponents, but now I'm going to talk about what do you do when there's negative exponents. So there's actually two ways to look at this. Um, I'm going to do the canceling method. So one thing that I'll do is I'll actually rewrite the expression. So if you look, this term here has a negative on it, and this term here has a negative on it. So what I'll do is before I even look at it, I'll just actually move those. So if I were to take these and move them down here, there would actually be now 12. Now one of the mistakes that people will make with this is when they think of, you know, quote unquote, moving this, they'll actually do negative 7 plus 5, and they'll make this a negative 2. But remember, the whole point of moving it down is so that the exponent becomes positive. So now it would be actually 7 plus 5. And this b over here would actually come down here as a positive 3. So now there would be 5 down here. And since there's nothing left up here, you always put a 1. So actually, for this particular problem, that would be it. That's all you'd have to do. This one right here, um, there's a negative symbol outside right here. What does that influence? Well, what it influences is my answer is going to be negative. That's it. That's all that's going to happen here. Um, otherwise, it's going to work out just kind of like what I did above. So I could see that this term here is negative and this term here is negative. And so what I want to do is go ahead and move those. So I'm going to go ahead and take this and move it up here. So that means I have to the fifth. And then this 5 comes up here to join that one, so this would be b to the 6. Now, since there's nothing down here, you could put a 1, but that's really silly. You just put minus a to the 5th, b to the 6th. Now, this one over here, if you'll notice, I've got a negative term here and a negative term here and a negative term here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move everything. So I'm going to take this one and move it down here so it comes here. Um, and then this one is actually going to come up here. Um, this guy is going to come down here and join that, so that's b to the seventh. You'll notice that we get at the top here it says canceling method. So um, we t on the last video, um, I pointed out that if you expand this all the way, it actually looks like this. So you can always, well, I don't need to do b's because the b's, there's no other b's. But basically what happens is I'm canceling like this. Um, so before I cancel, I actually have to make sure everything's in the right spot. Now finally with this one right here, um, I talked about this on this example here, but there's a negative. Now sometimes what will happen with all this negative movement is some people will say, oh look, this negative 8 is negative, so I'm going to move it down here. That's a number, that's not a negative exponent. So make sure you know the difference between the two because negative numbers are just negative numbers. This is negative 8 over 2, which is basically negative 4 over 1, if I simplify it. Then I can go ahead and do the rest of the stuff. So this a right here is going to come upstairs and join this a up here. So that's a to the fifth. Um, if you ever see something like this, you can go ahead and just cross it out. It doesn't do anything at all. And then I have b to the fifth down here. Now, I could actually leave the answer like this, but I'm going to neaten it up a bit because you really don't need this one right here. So this is negative 4 a to the fifth over b to the fifth. Now there's another way to do this entirely. I actually have the same problems written down here. Not all of them, but some of them, just to show you another way. And we also learned in the last video that what's actually going on here is, uh, is you subtract. So this is a to the negative 7 minus 5. And then I have a b negative 3 minus 2. So another way to approach this is to just use the rule. So the rule is if this is dividing this, um, it's a, b minus c. You can see the b and the c right here. So then I could just do the same thing. So I get a, if I add this together, I get negative 12. If I add this together, I get b to the negative 5. Can't leave it like that. So I end up putting it down on the bottom, just like that. And you can see on the last example I did, that's the same exact answer I got. I think this way is a little faster, but a lot of people like this. They don't like moving things around. So I'm going to do the same thing here. So first of all, I know my answer is going to be negative, so I want to make sure I put a big negative out there like that. And then I've got my a, and I've got a 3 up here, minus negative 2. And then I have a b. 
So it's going to be to the 1, because that's b to the 1, minus negative 5. So this is going to be a minus, and then this is 3. Negative negative 2 is plus 2, so that's a to the 5th. And b to the negative negative, that's a positive 5, to the 6th. And again, you can get the same answer doing it the other way. It doesn't make any difference at all. This one right here, um, I've got negative 8 over 2, so I always write that as a fraction. And then I've got the a to the 3 minus negative 2. And then I have a b to the 0 minus 5. So this part here is negative 4. This is 3 plus 2. This is b to the negative 5. This is almost done. I can't leave it like that because you can't have negative exponents. So what I'm going to do is just put this here and take this guy and put him down on the bottom. And that's how you do it. So your choices are to do it this way using the rule which is as long as the bases are the same, you subtract the exponents, or you can simply just move things around and cancel.